Welcome to our weekly worship service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. We praise you, mighty God, for it is our greatest joy to know that despite all the problems, our eternal future is secured through Jesus Christ our Lord. Challenge us each day by your Holy Spirit so that we do not lose our way on the pathway of Christian life and live our hearts each day in praise of your holy name. Amen. My message today is coming from Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. And scripture states, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family life. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright while your sleeves gathered around mine and bowed down to them. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. The word of God for the people of God. My message is titled today, God Given Dreams. God Given Dreams. Now, now my inspiration for this message came from my wife. She was telling me about a dream and for whatever reason, if I do dream, I never remember them. But she does. And I don't know if there's other people like me that, that know something goes through your head at night. But I don't remember. I just, I just wake up. Well, anyway, she's the one that motivated me. Let's get into this message. There's a story about a young high school student whose father was a horse trainer. Because the family had to follow the horse racing season, the boy had to change schools throughout the year. During his senior year, he was asked to write a paper about his dreams for the future. His paper described his dream of owning a 200 acre horse farm with stables and tracks and a 4,000 square foot home and a huge John Deere tractor. That's a pretty good dream. He even drew a diagram of the property and the design of his house. He turned the paper in, and two days later, it came back with a big fat F on the front of the paper, and a note to see the teacher immediately. After class, the teacher explained to the boy that his dream was unrealistic. The teacher said that the boy rewrote the paper with much more of a realistic dream that he would consider changing the grade. The boy went home and asked his father what to do. It is your decision, 
said the father. His father knew this was a very important decision for his son to make. The boy kept the paper for a whole week and then returned it to his teacher after class. Here, the boy said, you keep the elf and I'll keep my dream. Wow. You know, in our scriptures today, Joseph, one of 12 sons of Jacob, had a dream where he would rise up in authority over his brothers and they would bow down to him one day. He told his brother about his dreams that from this point on his life and his family's life was never the same. Harriet Tubman wrote, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the compassion to reach for the stars, to change the world. Dreams, the feed, dreams feed the soul and give wings to intelligence and make a great difference in our existence. Dreams can change your life and change the world. For example, George W. Bush decided to run for president because of a dream. Ben Franklin encouraged the other founding fathers to push for independence for the colonies after he had had a dream for independence. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity was inspired by a dream. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech was inspired from an actual dream which moved him to the point of talking about it in his speech on the Washington Ball. It is our dreams that God not only speaks truth, but where we can discover God's purpose for our lives. But dreams do not just happen when we are asleep. Dreams can occur while we're awake. Dreams happen when we let our imaginations run wild and when we choose to think outside the box, when we throw off all of the constraints of the ways things are and imagine the way things could be. The question, what is a God-given dream? A God-given dream is God's picture, God's vision, or God's blueprint for a preferred future that helps us fulfill our purpose in life. Indeed, God has placed a dream in each of us for a specific cause, which can transform our lives and can build God's kingdom. And I'm not talking about a dream to win the lottery. Too many people dream about that. I'm talking about a dream. I'm talking about a vision that changes the status quo. I'm talking about a dream or a vision that speaks to the very depths of our souls. God created us for a purpose. And our purpose is directly linked to the dream or vision that God gives us of a preferred life and future that impacts and transforms the lives of others for the sake of his kingdom. Listen closely. The day we lose sight of our dreams, the day we lose sight of our vision, is the day that we stop moving forward with God's purposes. Some people stop moving forward and pursuing their God-given dreams because it seemed too impossible. Some people just said no to God. Some people have not discovered God's dream for their life. Yet all of us, yet all of us have been given a dream placed in our heart to pursue a purpose greater than us. You see, the life of Joseph teaches us several things about pursuing God's dreams for our lives. First, expect opposition. After his dreams, brothers, Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit and then stole him into slavery. Whenever you pursue great things for God, whatever your God-given purpose is, expect opposition. Hear me real close. Everybody does not have to believe in your dream. Everybody does not have to believe in your dream. But know this, as long as you know 
as long as you know your dream was chosen by God and for God's purposes, dream on. Dream on in spite of opposition of your dream. Second, expect hardship. No great purpose is ever achieved without experiencing hardship. For Joseph, that meant he was sold into slavery. And then Joseph's master's wife tried to get Joseph to sleep with her, but he refused. As a result, she falsely accused him of rape, landing Joseph in jail, no matter how hard we may try to pursue our God-given dream, we will encounter hardships and difficulties. Expect hardships, and that includes failure. The reason many people fall short of pursuing their God-given dream is because they encounter failure. Some of us fail one time, and we quit or scale back God's dreams for our lives. And we settle for less than what God has purposed us for. Yet God, yet God can use our failures to help us to keep pursuing our dreams. And whether you believe it or not, failure is the main ingredient to success. I say it again. Failure is the main ingredient to success. Every time it seemed that Joseph had failed, Every time it seemed that he had failed. But God used it to help Joseph to pursue his dream. God used Joseph's hardship as the means to fertilize and cultivate his dream and develop his character for the challenges which lay ahead. God uses hardships and even failures in our lives too. Do not shrink from it, but instead embrace it. Expect hardship. Be persistent. When hardship and difficulties come, do not let moments of difficulty stop you from dreaming on. Notice what happened to Joseph. Joseph dreamed that he would rise up to a position of authority, but he found himself in prison and falsely accused of rape. Yet Joseph realized he had been chosen by God for a great purpose that extended upon the low and dark circumstances he faced while in prison. Genesis chapter 40, verses five through seven says, while they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night. And each dream had its own meaning. And who do you think interpreted the dream? You're right, Joseph. Who gave Joseph the means of interpreting these two men's dreams? It was God. You see, Joseph never lost hope. Joseph never gave up. Joseph learned he could live out his purpose in any circumstance. So he made himself available to be used by God. Know this, as we pursue our God-given dreams, we must know without a doubt that God has called and chosen us to serve him and pursue our dreams no matter the circumstances we face. In faith, we have to persist because nothing, nothing, not even us, we will not stop God's plan. We won't stop God's plan, even if we fall short or quit. God's purposes will be served. Joseph interpreted their dreams for them. And in turn, they told the king who needed his dreams interpreted. And that led to Joseph's relief. Because Joseph continued to be faithful, God was able to use that and keep Joseph moving forward to fulfill God's dream for his life. My advice, stay focused on the big picture. God calls us to remain focused on the big picture. That is his dream and purpose for our life despite our present circumstances. Instead of wanting to give up, God wants us to stay focused on the dream God wants us to stay focused on the vision he laid on us. And that is exactly what Joseph did, which pulled him above and out of his circumstances. My advice, remember God's faithfulness. Joseph did not quit because he was reminded of what God had done in the past. Joseph remembered God had been with him all alone. 
Joseph was reminded how God was with him in the pit. Joseph remember how God was with him when he was in slavery. Joseph remember God was with him when he was falsely accused. Too often in our lives, when we're surrounded by persecution, when we're surrounded by hardship, we forget how God's hand has been with us all alone. Too often, some people get spiritual amnesia. But Joseph, but Joseph did not forget. Do not forget how God has brought us out of every trial we have experienced in our lives. Never forget what God has done for us in the past. Joseph did not forget. And that gave Joseph the persistence to keep pursuing God's purpose. So often in life, we stop. We stop. But whatever you do, do not quit. The same way God used Joseph, God wants to use each one of us. Third, tap our passion. Tap our passion. The closer we get to fulfilling God's purpose, the harder it seems to get. Have you noticed that? What got Joseph through was his passion for God and for God's dreams for his life. Passion is the thing that keeps us going and keeps us enthusiastic. Passion is the thing that we're willing to die for. But the question, do you know what your passion is? You see, Joseph knew his passion. He did not let hardship stop him from persisting. Joseph had passion and kept that kept him dreaming. Passion helped Joseph pursue his God-given dream. Never let difficulties, never let failures diminish or cause you to lose your passion. The fourth and final thing, the life of Joseph teaches us about pursuing God's dreams for our lives is to utilize the power of prayer. To utilize the power of prayer. James chapter five, verse 16 says, the prayers of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Therefore, pray like you've never prayed before. Because when we remain fervent, we keep our zeal and constant communication with God. Then we identify, we better identify and hear what our purpose is for God. So keep praying because I would truly believe calling plus persistence plus passion plus prayer equals connection to God's purposes. So in your leisure time, continue to read Genesis from, Genesis from chapter 37 to 47, and you will quickly find out that Joseph realized his dream was not about him. <clears throat> his dream was not about him, but it was about being a blessing to others. Know this, when we pursue our dreams, when we pursue our purposes, our God-given purposes, others will be ultimately blessed. We're never too young. We're never too old to proceed, to pursue and achieve our God-given dreams. So claim the call of God to your dream for your life. Persist through everything. Remember, God is always faithful. Tap into your passion, empower yourself with prayer and pursue that dream to the glory of God Almighty. Amen. Just perhaps, just perhaps my message touched someone in a way so special that you now want to give your life to Jesus. Then repeat this message with me and you will be saved if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead. You too will be saved. For it is with your mouth that you believe and are justified and it is with your heart, it's with your heart that you are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess your faith and you'll be saved in Jesus' name. Just that simple. And if you make that decision today, we cherish with you. And now as I bring this worship service to a close, may God give us faith that connects us all. Give us a hope that transcends today and give us a dream Give us a vision 
that reveal God's purposes for our lives. Amen.